And I know that there are so many people who are getting tired of the discussion because they're not convinced yet. Even Health Canada's spokesman, Dr. Peter Clooney, made a ridiculous comment. Well, I haven't seen people on the streets growing horns. Well, I want to give you a snapshot of the effect that fluoride can have on human health. And I'm going to go all the way to Ireland to get it. The Clan Wa is a consultant, a risk management consultant and environmental scientist. We have had dentists on the air. We have had authors. We have had scientists. Uh, we have had uh, all kinds of advocates. Uh, we have had health councils on the air. All of them, all of them, all of them saying, get fluoride out of the water. Mr. Waugh joins us now for his perspective. Mr. Waugh, appreciate you joining us all the way from Ireland. Hi, Andy. How are you? I'm doing some math here. What time is it now in the afternoon in Ireland? Uh, just about 5 p.m. Just about 5 p.m. Mr. Waugh, we have a very important decision to make at London City Hall tonight. I don't want to influence your arguments. You're in the risk management uh, business. Uh, let me ask you about the risk involved in having fluoride in drinking water, as you have experienced it there in Ireland. Um, well, first, Andy, I suppose I've just completed an exhaustive risk management assessment of the whole area of water fluoridation and looked at over 1,200 uh, scientific, medical, um, environmental, toxicology reports, as well as looking at the health statistics for Ireland, because Ireland is one of only two countries in the world that has a national legislative policy for water fluoridation, and they've been conducting what could be regarded as a medical experiment on the Irish people for the last 40 years. And the consequences of it uh, are absolutely astonishing when you look at the stats for Ireland compared to any other country in the world. And I have absolutely no doubt, based on the research that I've reviewed, which is all peer-reviewed and has been uh, examined independently by uh, scientists and academics in order to be published in the first place, that fluoride has an association with these conditions. And I'll just give you a few for, for example. What is the level, by the way, of fluoride in the water in uh, Ireland compared to other countries? It's now uh, about uh, 0.8 uh, milligrams per litre. Uh, it was reduced two years ago, and it was reduced because of uh, some health effects that they were looking at, which were to do with dental fluorosis, but they haven't looked at the wider context of how it's affecting the population at large. And as an example, here's one, like the global... Um, average for neurological disease in the world is 6.3% of the population. And the level of neurological disease in Ireland, in comparison to that, is 17.3. That, so, is, that is so shocking and so astounding. I'm going to ask you to give it to me one more time. We have more than twice the global average of neurological disease in this country compared to any non-fluoridated country in the world. Now, that includes... Like, there are over 750,000 people in this country of only 4.5 million people who have a neurological illness. And uh, apart from that, we have twice the global average of osteoporosis. We have the highest level of childhood epilepsy. We have the highest level of cancers, of certain uh, types of cancers that will be associated with the digestive tract, right? So that would include bladder cancer, it would include cancer of the kidneys, cancer of the liver, it would include cancer of the stomach, intestinal cancer. All of these also have an association with fluoride ingestion from drinking water. How do you know there's any link at all between all these horrible diseases and the fluoride in your water? Well, um, there was a study published just this summer in a neurology uh, journal, a peer-reviewed journal in Spain. Um, that journal had said that fluoride can take up to 20 years to have its full effect in terms of toxicological effect on humans. And as far as they're concerned, the evidence clearly demonstrates that it is causing neurological disorders in the population, right? That's, that's just one study alone, right? Apart from that, get away from neurological effects, right? Uh, the National Research Council of the United States of America, when they did their extensive study in 2006, they accepted the fact that 1% of the population may be hypersensitive to fluoride, right? Now, that would be about 4,000 people of the city of London, right? And the conditions that would be shown by those people who would have hypersensitivity to fluoride would include things like 
migraines, skin rashes, gastrointestinal upsets, arthritic like pains, uh, chronic fatigue, depression, nervousness, and respiratory difficulties. So if you vote for this to go into your water supply tomorrow, you have to accept the fact that you're exposing 1% of your population who are going to automatically uh, have these symptoms if they don't have them already because your, your water is already being fluoridated. Now, that's only to deal with that 1% um, that will be hypersensitive to fluoride. Uh, you have to look at the issues of the World Health Organization have identified that calcium and, and magnesium are both critical from a cardiovascular and neurological and cancer point of view in humans. And fluoride has been identified to be an active compound that will actually seek out and prevent the metabolism of calcium and magnesium in the human body. I mean, it is absolutely astonishing that the, re the research that is out there. And Previously, you spoke there about animal welfare. I mean, I've read a report from Cornell University, which is a top Ivy League university, number fourth in the world. Their Department of Biomedical Science, College of Veterinary Medicine, found that horses that were fed fluoridated water developed chronic fluoride poisoning that resulted in crippling skeletal fluorosis that required it to be put down. Europe, almost entirely free of added fluoride, correct? 96, 98 percent? There's only two places left. The Republic of Ireland, um, and we're hoping to have this policy reviewed based on all of the studies that have been out there, and including mine, which has gone into the World Health Organization and uh, the Government of Ireland and the European Commission recently, but the only other region is a small section of the UK which is about 10% of their population, and that's it. The last mainland European country to ban it was Switzerland in 2003. Um, China stopped it in, uh, in the 1980s because they found the link between fluoride and reduced intelligence in children. Uh, there's a link there that the NRC, the National Research Council, have found between diabetes, for instance. We have an explosion of diabetes in Ireland. Over 400,000 people have died, uh, are suffer from diabetes in Ireland. And they found that anybody who suffers from diabetes should not be drinking fluoridated water because they have reduced kidney uh, functioning. De uh, Declan, you went through some of the diseases and what the rates are compared to other uh, countries. Uh, we have just two or three minutes left. I want to leave this with every citizen here of the, city, of, the, of the City of London, Ontario. Every councillor is going to vote on this tonight. Uh, you have fluoride in the water, and you're saying there have been a, a disastrous results uh, to people's health. Can you run down those comparisons one more time? We have twice the global level of neurological disease. That includes diseases like dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease epilepsy, we have twice the level of osteoporosis uh, compared to any other country that's non-fluoridated. We have the highest level of cardiovascular disease in the world. We have the highest level of, uh, one of the highest levels of diabetes in the world. Um, we have, <laughs> and one of the highest levels of cancer in the world. And, like, uh, it's just beyond belief, and ultimately, at the end of the day, it comes down to this for the councillors and for the citizens of London. Both the United States Academic National Research Council and the European Commission themselves, the two leading international organizations, have found that there has been no human health studies undertaken on the fluoride chemicals used for water fluoridation. And it is criminally negligent of any organization or any councillor who's supposed to be representing public interest to vote to put something like that into your drinking water supply. Wow. We have 30 seconds left. It's yours to address our city councillors directly on their vote tonight. 30 seconds. I would say, I would leave it with this. There are no human health studies that have ever been undertaken to show that fluoride chemicals have been tested for human safety or environmental toxicology. And you cannot, you cannot put a chemical into everybody's drinking water supply that has not been tested for safety. It is criminally negligent, and you will have to be liable for any illnesses that will result as a consequence of that, ultimately. Declan Waugh, risk management consultant and environmental scientist, talking to us all the way from Ireland. Uh, Mr. Waugh, I can't thank you enough uh, for having the, the, the last word, because this has been a battle that's been going on for months here. It's a raging debate. 
Uh, there are some people in our health unit who simply won't listen. They think they know better than Calgary and Waterloo and Moncton, New Brunswick and LaSalle and all of Europe, 96 to 98 percent now fluoride free. And now you're saying in Ireland, uh, you have learned that putting fluoride in the water has disastrous results. Mr. Watt, thank you across the pond. Uh, we thank you for your time. Thank you. All the best, please. The Clan Wah, risk management consultant and environmental scientist. We don't make this stuff up, folks. We go to the experts, and they're saying, get fluoride out of your water. You're paying a horrible price with your health. Well, we just pray that uh, wisdom prevails tonight at City Hall, and we'll talk about it in the morning right here on London Today on News Talk 1290.